Well, the next stage of our painting is to mask in with the soft pastel. I've selected a palette of color here on my little tray. And what I'm gonna do first, I like to start with the darks and then go to the middle values and then to the lights finally. So I'm gonna start with some blue-gray in on the darks. There may be one value, certainly one value darker that will go, but I wanna start feeling out the sense of the, uh, this is a bluer green that goes over the red. And, and I don't, so I don't wanna cover the red right away because the whole point of the complementary underpainting is to let the uh, complementary color show through. So we don't wanna just quickly cover it up. This is a little deeper, darker green. And um, you can almost see when I'm using a lighter hand, you can see through the stroke with the grain of the underpainting coming through. And when I use a heavier stroke, it fully covers the grain of the painting. So I, often I'll use a lighter stroke, but if I know that I need to go deep and rich into that, I'll address that with a, with a thicker application of the soft pastel. So we're gonna come up here with this nice, strong, dark bank of the river. And as I do, I always squint my eyes, squint for those simple, strong value shapes. Always simplifies your, your scene quickly. I'm gonna slip back to the blue, gray, green as I get higher up here. You can already start to feel the, the resonance, the brilliance between the, the two colors taking place. Now right around the sun, I'm going to warm that up, but away, away from the light, I'm going to come up under this bank of the river. And I try best as I can to make nice, strong, bold marks, not, not to be too fussy at this stage. Let's switch over to a warmer green. Uh, and see how that works. Yeah, nice, strong, warmer green. More yellow in the green. Be a little careful about how this wiggles its way out the scene. So at times I'm using a nice, strong stroke. Down here, um, I don't want to cover all this up, certainly initially, and, and I will make some more linear, kind of grassy looking strokes. So we'll, we'll develop that as we observe and soak it in. Let's come through the middle of our field here. I'm gonna to go to a slightly lighter, Mid-value green. Stroke that right across that violet. Beautiful color relationship. And as you can see, the underpainting um, is fully stained into the paper. So there's no red or violet that's mixing with this layer. It's set right into the paper. Now, at this kind of a stage, it's almost overstimulating because there's so much red that continues to uh, vibrate as you're seeing the green. So it'll start to settle in soon. I'm gonna just clean my fingers. So it's important as you develop your work to um, take time to really observe and see the impact of the work you're doing. Here we have a little uh, blue-gray in between the darks of the, the bank and the water. Get that nice. This is a marshy river bank here, so there's lots of in between the water and the grass, the water and the grass that we're gonna build up.
all the way up top. I'm just going to take a moment and look at that horizon line again, make sure I'm keeping it. So a little bit of this furthest back uh, tree line that's way off on the horizon line. shift one darker on this. I'm going to have to pick that out. So I do go into a little more violet than the blue gray. It's almost, I need a slightly more neutral version. That's better. Just a little bit grayer version of that. This is a plug for organizing your palette. The pastelist can't mix his paints right before him. We can interact them on the surface of the board, but if you uh, need something a little more neutral or a little lighter, or a little darker, and your palette is organized, it's easy to find it. Okay, that's starting to work. So, we don't have any of the gold or the yellow or the peach in this painting yet. It's going to be fun to get to work on that next. So actually I'm going to leave some of this uh, red just poking through for this stage and start on my warmer colors in the middles and the lights. So let's get into the, the ochre. Nice yellow ochre. Now, as I'm placing these marks in, I'm, I'm, I'm observing the movement of the, of the light through the clouds. So we can begin to build some of that uh, shape right in. And uh, whenever you're working on the sky, if you have a water scene, you've got to bring that right into the water as well. We don't want to have all different colors going on up in the sky and then, you know, no relationship with the water below. So try to get those colors right into the water quickly. Squint my eyes, make sure the values are right. It can feel odd to go darker up in the sky, but if you want that light to look resonant and, and brilliant. We need that value. So here's a another yellow ochre, a little bit lighter, working towards our lighter values now. No shortage of exciting color in this painting right now. I would say the complimentary underpainting is a great approach for the color enthusiast who loves exciting color. All right, I'm going to go into uh, the peaches and the warms a little more. So as the light sprays out over the horizon, we're going to get these nice warm peach again. And over the water, beautiful color. colors that communicates the sense of light that the sun is radiating through that part of the sky and over the over the river. <clears throat> Take a look. Let's go to a lighter 
yellow ochre even still. Start to build our way into this. This is a nice light yellow ochre. Come back up. We're closing in on this sunrise here in our sky. Now, I will save the blending and refining for a, for a later stage. I'm just gonna try to really mask this in at this stage. Nice, strong marks. You know, you don't wanna be putting a little bit of pastel down on a, on a painting and then blending it around. That always looks a bit anemic. We wanna get nice, strong buildup of the, of the medium. Address the light area of the sun. And we need to cool this down over here as well, but let's get some of this light area of the sun right where that sun peeks through. It kind of sprays out above. This is a very soft pastel, nice buttery soft. Uh, if you want to have that really painterly look, you need to get the very soft pastels. Medium or hard pastels just won't be able to develop that style. Okay. So let's uh, set this in with some gray. As we move away from the light, it cools down. Further up in here. Just about the same value as that yellow ochre, just a lot cooler. And now as we go up to the top of the river, we need more of a pink, so like a salmon pink. Oh, let's try, this is a little too dark. Lighter pink, right in there. Keep one eye on the direction and movement of the water here. I need something in between the two. That's it. This is a great transitional pink between the sun Okay, a little bit stronger on the darks below the uh, river. Sort of watching. There's a there's always a, a balance between uh, having too much of the underpainting showing through, and then where um, you're covering too much of it up. I'm going to go a little darker up here. So you just keep moving the painting forward and evaluating that. There's a point at which the little flickers of the underpainting coming through create a wonderful radiance. Just 
set this underneath a little more right in this area. Now the one other thing I haven't done is I really haven't dealt with the, uh, the clouds. It's just the underpainting there. I'm going to use a little bit of our lavender gray. Diffuse that magenta. Squint, squint. Continue to always simplify the scene. And the, the more we look into our paintings, the more we see uh, the complexity and the subtlety of both the color and value. So it's very important to develop good habits, uh, squinting, backing up on your work. Make sure we don't get too fussy. Okay, I like this color. Let's get some of that in the river. Now I have done all just bold, strong massing in marks here. I haven't done any of the soft blending or diffusing. So I'm just gonna take this just a bit further at this stage. Just a little more peach here. All right. So I've masked in just about everything here and uh, I don't wanna quite cover this up on the bottom yet. I wanna do a little more uh, blending. So I think we're going to be, we're good here on the massing in stage. The final stage of the painting will just be refining it. <laughs> 